We're here at the Killashi House Hotel at the 2013 Show Jumpers Awards Ball, and we're very honoured to be joined here by our special Hall of Fame winner for 2013, Tommy Wade. Tommy, what does the award mean to you? Uh, it means a lot to me because it's from show jumping people that I know all my life, young and old, and it means a lot to me to get this award. And of course, the horse that brought show jumping and yourself to the public's attention back in the 60s was Dundrum. How would he rate in today's terms now with all the other horses out there? I wouldn't have any fear of any of them, to be honest with you, but he was a great horse. Uh, the real test of a good horse, as I've always said, you need a horse that can win and win a Grand Prix, jump two clear rounds and go against the clock and the jump off. Then he's got to go out and win the puissance, jump seven foot four or seven foot, whatever he has to jump to win the puissance, and then come in the next day after that and win a table C class, which is only over 150 and 120 racing round. You need a horse to be able to do all those three things to then say he's a real good horse. And they're scarce. And he was a, a bloody type of a horse. How big was he? He was only a little bigger than a pony. He was 50 and one and a half, exactly. But he was like a little thoroughbred and he was all muscled and he was a lovely horse to ride him and strong and powerful, you know. And you rode in many arenas around Europe at the time and you're actually wearing the special gold watch you won in the Grand Prix in Brussels. Can you tell us a bit about that day? Yeah, that was my first visit to Brussels and uh, I won the Grand Prix in Brussels. Be a good field, best field in the world at the time, Nelson Pessoa and Harvey Smith and the whole lot of them were in it, but I won it anyhow. And, um, I won lots of Grand Prix around. I won the Grand Prix in Amsterdam one year as well and I won, I won the King George V at the White City in London. The last time it was there I beat uh, Mancinelli on uh, the Grey Mayor. He was second and uh, George Hobbs was third. But, um, I won a lot of big Grand Prix all over and was leading right on Dublin two years at the horse show. Went through the card one year on Dublin, won all five international classes. Not an easy thing to do in Dublin, but I did it anyhow. So, Some amazing achievements. Who were the riders that stood out for you at the time? Only one. And I was meeting him every show and every Jim Canna I went to. And he was the best rider I've ever seen since or before, the late Seamus Hayes. Best rider I've ever seen. What made him so special? He had a mind of his own. You'd never know what he'd be thinking. <laughs> but he was, he was a very hard man to beat and he'd jump off. That's all I can tell you. And then, of course, you had amazing successes later on as chef to keep the Irish team. What special memories would you have of that time? Uh, we had some brilliant runs there. So we won, I think, 33 Nations Cups. But I'm not taking credit for all 33. Jerry Mullins now was in charge of smaller teams. Now, I don't want him to say smaller teams, but three-star shows or some places. But um, he gave me a hand, shall we say. He was good at it. But we won 33 Nations Cups in about six years I was in charge. And on top of that, we won the individual World Championship. Damon Linnan won it on Liscalgo in Spain. We won gold medal at the European Team Championship with a weak enough team in Holland. And the riders on the team, fellas like Billy Toomey, Peter Charles, who was a brilliant rider, Peter Charles. And um, Peter Charles, Billy Toomey, Later time then, Keane O'Connor came on the scene and they all won major Grand Prix at all them big international shows, which is not very easy done. But they were top class all them boys. Of course, you gave many of those riders you mentioned their first start in uh, Nations Cups of Irish teams. Yeah, I take a good lot of the credit for bringing them on the team, along with Paul Duffy, senior and junior from Galway, who were on the International Affairs Committee with me at the time. And they were two men knew all about show jumping and were good judges. And... Um, we wouldn't have been the most popular with a lot of people in this country for bringing in Peter Charles on the team. But we were so badly stuck for a good rider, we needed him. And he was half Irish, his mother was Irish. So that, like the soccer players, he was entitled to jump for Ireland. <laughs> that's, that's the way I saw it, anyhow. <laughs> but he was a great success, he was a great rider. He's a great rider still, so he won a gold medal on the British team at the Olympics in London. And would there be any standout horses of, the, of, of that era that you saw jumping and you were probably taking care of at the time with those riders? Uh, the, the, the most of them had good horses. Uh, Kevin Babington, now a guy came from America, he's from my county, he's from Carrick and Shore originally, wouldn't have been well known at all over here. But he had a horse called Caroline King and they formed a great partnership. There's a lot in the partnership of the rider and the horse. But Kevin Babington and Caroline King in the Nations Cup, he done more double clear rounds and he won Grand Prix as well, big ones. They were a great combination. You know, and Peter Charles was a different kettle of fish. He could win a good class on the mother's horse. You know, so. 
And um, I think you mentioned it there before, the future's looking bright with some nice young riders coming up. Uh, do you have your eye on anybody or do, do you think the future is bright for Irish show jumping? Yeah, the future is very bright for Irish show jumping and at the moment there's some good, real good young riders, particularly that young boy from Wexford. He's top class. I only I watched him carefully at Dublin show in three classes and I watched him on television a lot of times and he's a top class rider. Yes. Young Alan, he's a top class rider. He seems to have a good eye for a stride and seems to be a bit cool under pressure and that's what you want. And that, that leads me to the ne my next question which is what does it take do you think to, to make it these days? I mean the tracks are probably a bit more technical these days are they? Are they harder? What do you think, it, uh, what, what does it take to be a big rider? Or would you disagree with me? I would disagree with you. The tracks are a lot easier because everything is measured out now. You could nearly, nearly go in now blindfolded and jump a clear round once you went to the start and the finish. <laughs> in my day there was no such thing as that. You could have one fence here and another 25 mile away. You know, that kind of way. You had to have a knife for a stride. And I reckon, I still reckon, that you're born with that. You can't, that's something you won't develop up to the top, to the top league anyway. You have to be born with that. It's like a good hurler or a good footballer. My brother could be a great footballer and I wouldn't be able to kick a ball from here to the wall maybe and the same with other people. So you're born with that gift, you have that eye that you can see and if you haven't got that eye for a stride you're in big trouble once you get up to grades, you have no chance. So you think it's a, it's a challenge for course designers, they should uh, maybe throw away the rule book and go back to the old ways again? Uh, no, I'm not saying they should throw away the rule book but they make too much about uh, training and all this nonsense and some of the best riders I ever jumped against, they got no training. Fellas like Harvey Smith comes to mind. He was a chicken farmer before he started show jump, and he was one of the best I ever jumped against. So it's not all about training, you've got to have the talent. And of course, after your show jumping career then, you uh, got into the whole world of, of racing and a national hunt. And uh, of course, one of your most famous horses that went through your hands was West Tip, the 1983 Grand National winner. Yes, there a lot of famous horses went through my hands. Dark Ivy was not a very good horse. Should have won the national the year before that. And I passed on a lot of horses that won Cheltenham Festival, a good lot of horses, I suppose. Say it or ten all together anyway. And so I didn't have a lot of good horses in England and trained. I trained race horses for, I suppose, 30 years. Might not have been the best trainer in the world, but usually when I put the money down, they were knocking on the door anyway. Was there anything special at the time about West Tip when you had him? There was, he was pure useless. Pure useless. Really? We thought he was useless, we thought he was as slow as a coach and we didn't bother with him. He was five years old. When I sold him to Michael Oliver, brought a lot of horses off for me and there were a lot of good horses I sold him, a good horse called Von Trapp, who was Cheltenham for him, and other horses as well, good ones. And I sold him this horse to make a hunter for some old gentleman in England, wanted a nice, sensible horse to jump away and no racing. I warned him, I said, one thing I will give you a guarantee, he won't win a race. I was wrong. <laughs> because he was a Cheltenham winner as well, yes? He won a Cheltenham, he won the big chase at Cheltenham. The, I don't know what it's called now, but it's a big three mile chase and he carried top weight in that and won it. Don Woody rode him as well. He was a real good horse. Yes, Don Woody was on board? Don Woody rode him all the time. Yes. And James, you're chairman of the Show Jumpers Club. You must have special memories of, of this man, our, our present Hall of Famer. Well, I don't actually remember him riding Dundrum. Uh, my father would have competed, competed, competed against him a lot, you know, and a lot of respect for Tommy Wade, because as, as Tommy has told me earlier, they bought a lot of horses of one another. He sold my grandfather horses all down through the years but what what i would say about tommy tommy had the will to win and when you jumped on a team you were on there to do a job and god help you if you didn't do the job and that's what brought him a lot of success i remember one particular year i think they won 10 nations cups one after another which was unheard of and but tommy sort of he drove fear into the riders you know they had great respect for him and he got the best out of riders and they might not always agree about what he said or what he did like his tactics but he always got the best out of everybody young and old so tommy just following on James's point there, was there a certain amount of psychology involved in being a chef to keep and, and making guys get there and make them get that winning mentality? You had to know each rider. Each rider was different. And we had a girl on the team most of the time, Jessica Curtin. She was a good rider, a very good rider. But difficult enough at times, you know, she might want to do one thing and I wouldn't want her to do that kind of thing. But I'll give you an example. The year that um, we won the gold medal, team gold medal. Demo Lennon was last man in on Liz Calgo and she was jumping out of her skin at the time. And the pocket, the jumping pocket practice ring was down about 200 yards from the main ring. They couldn't see it and they'd be called to come up. And they come up along then, see, so. I knew if Demo Lennon jumped a clear around, we'd have won. There was only Sweden to go after us and they couldn't beat us. 
and I knew I had figured out the score that if he jumped to clear round, we had the World Champ- the European Championship won. And I went down and met Dermot Lynn on the way up, and he said to me, how are we going? And I said, we're not going so bad at all. He can tell you this, we're not going so bad at all. If you go clear, we'll finish third. That's if the Swedish fellow behind us don't jump a clear round, and then we'll be only fourth. But if you jump a clear round, we have a good chance at third. And he said, that's not so bad. So he went in with no pressure on him. And he rode the best round I ever seen him in my lifetime and jumped a clear round, and we won the European Championship. There were tactics. They talk about sports psychology today, don't they? It's only all rubbish. It's only all rubbish. <laughs> And James, it's been a great year for Irish show jumping, and especially in the domestic front. Uh, lots of young riders who are picking up awards there today. Uh, would you be hoping for the future as well? Oh yeah, as Tommy said, we have lots of great, great uh, young riders, and I have to sort of mention. And Tommy mentioned Bertram Allen is pure natural talent, and I totally agree with, with with Tommy and what he says about that. You can't teach that young fella. He's a, just a pure natural. He's winning classes. He can see strides a long way. Don't get me wrong, he got help from Con Power in his younger days. Everything all helps. But that young lad has got tremendous talent, so he has, and a big, big future. He's exciting for Ireland. Right? And lucky enough, he's the sponsor and his father behind him to get put good horses under him. But regardless of any other horse, he gets the best out of any horse he sits on. And he does seem to have the hunger to win and succeed, doesn't he? Oh my God, Charlie, he's, he was the leading, as I said earlier on, he's a leading international at Dublin Horse Show. On his first year jumping in seniors in, in Dublin, unbelievable. And second in the European Championships, and uh, last year I think he could have been third or something in the Euro- Junior European Championships. Uh, brilliant talent. And looking forward to the year ahead. We have some new sponsors on board now for the Spring Series. Very, very, very happy to announce there tonight that Red Mills have come on board. I think that they're going to be in show gym for a long time and really looking forward to working with them. And the great initiative for next year and things going forward. Really exciting times for show jumping. There you have it. It's uh, been a pleasure to speak to these two gentlemen, especially our Hall of Famer Tommy Wade. And uh, we'll let you now uh, go off and enjoy the rest of the night. And uh, thanks very much.